You know, one of the first tutorials everybody always looks up is how do I set up an HDRI so I get realistic lighting and reflections and all that, and that's well and good, but um, of course HDRIs have a major issue, which is the fact that this thing looks like a massive sphere on the environment, uh, meaning it doesn't look like our sphere is actually sitting on anything. So uh, today I'm going to propose a solution that kind of takes our HDRI and projects it so that we actually have a floor. And uh, the nice thing about this is the light's still coming from the same direction. We have the shadow catcher in some sense, or really the environment is the shadow catcher. And uh, this is just kind of like a nicer way to work because we can actually uh, see this thing on the ground plane. Um, it works with reflections and all that. So let me teach you exactly how to do this. So a uh, new Blender file. By the way, I should mention there's a super complicated but technically way more accurate way of doing this. Uh, we're not going to do it because it uses a bunch of nodes. We're going to keep it simple. So this is the effective, not perfect, but a simple solution. Uh, so first of all, let's set up our scene as if we were setting up an HDRI. So I'm getting rid of the light and changing to cycles. Uh, these are just things you do whenever you set up an HDRI. Consider this the crash course. Uh, what you do is you go to shading. You go to the world tab since we want to affect the world. Let's actually see that with rendered view. And if we were to add in a environment uh, texture node and connect that to the color, um, really, uh, just like you'd import in an HDRI normally, all you have to do is pick an HDRI and then you're pretty much good to go. Uh, right, this is the basic setup where you get your light coming from, I guess, the sun direction over here and everything works the way you would expect. But again, uh, we have this issue where this thing's like a massive sphere, again, on the environment shader, makes sense, um, but it doesn't have a ground plane. So here is the solution. Uh, first thing we are going to do is we are going to add in a sphere. Um, and ideally, we want this to have, you know, more geometry is better. We don't want to overdo it, but something like 100 by 100 is plenty. Uh, point is uh, a sphere um, has a pole on the top and bottom, and this uh, makes some weird stuff for our projection. Uh, so the smaller the pole is, or the more geometry we have, the better. Um, so take your sphere, make it like a bit bigger, doesn't have to be massive. Ideally, just hide it and go closer to your clue, uh, cube and unhide it. So now we're inside the sphere. Um, which, which is dark, it's getting scary. <laughs> uh, but once we are inside the sphere, we are gonna go to the object um, material setting. So we're gonna give our sphere a material, create a material. And for this, we are gonna make a image texture. So not an environment texture, but an image texture um, of the same HDRI. So that should be loaded in right here. Um, so currently we kind of have the same setup where our cube is inside a sphere and that sphere has this HDRI projected. Um, the nice thing about doing a sphere, and this is why we did it, is if we go into edit mode, we can actually take the bottom hemisphere, in other words, everything that is the floor, and uh, flatten it or project, project it up to the ground plane. Uh, to do this, we need to select the bottom hemisphere. Quick way to do this is you select the middle like edge loop, right click, mark seam, and then if you uh, go into face mode and click L while hovering over here, it's going to select uh, this area. So that's a nice trick. I'm going to go to 3D cursor so I can scale this downward. So now this is scaling like inwards towards the 3D cursor. And of course, we want to scale this exactly by zero um, so that now we have this uh, ground plane projected correctly. So uh, inside the camera view, and I guess we should make our sphere a bit bigger. So our camera is actually inside of here. Uh, you can see we've kind of created an environment where we can bring our cube up. And um, even though the lighting and the shadows don't work yet, and we'll figure out how to do that in a second, uh, you can see we put it in this environment. Now, one quick uh, trick uh, that will make everything much more easy to navigate and much more realistic in some sense is in your view. In other words, this is the camera, but for only you know the viewport before you actually you know go into your camera. Uh, take your focal length and set it to something smaller, like 20. Uh, this is what's going to let you kind of navigate around like this is a uh, globe. Right, so you can pick your focal length here. You don't want to get uh, crazy with it. Okay, so again, move it up, and I'm going to pick a focal length of 20 or so. Okay, um, one thing you are going to notice, I guess two things really, is first of all, if we um, disable the sphere, you're going to see that we're kind of looking at a different direction. And second of all, the lighting uh, changes. We don't want either of those things to happen. So starting off with the uh, direction thing, what we can do is first of all, look at the direction. So we have a path going in here. And all we have to do is take our sphere and then rotate it so it's matching roughly, doesn't need to be perfect, uh, the same direction. Of course, it's not going to look exactly the same because we didn't align it perfectly and we have a, a weird focal length, but this is just a way to get the sun direction roughly in the right uh, uh, direction and uh, stuff like that. So again, we just rotated the sphere itself. 
Um, finally, you're, you're going to notice again, the lighting's a bit different. It's much brighter uh, when we don't have the sphere. And of course, that's the case because uh, when we have this kind of dome casing, uh, the lighting is coming from uh, here and the environment kind of can't enter uh, because, you know, there's a hard exterior shell. To fix this, we're going to select our sphere, go to the um, cycles properties, object properties, whatever you want to call it, uh, go to visibility, and we are going to disable shadow. In other words, now the light is kind of seeping through our uh, dome is a good way to think about it. So before the light couldn't enter, um, and now it can. Uh, so you can see this is before shadow and after shadow. Um, and now we, we kind of have the full setup, but it would be nice if we have a um, shadow. Uh, you could either do that with a shadow catcher by adding in a plane, um, although I find that's not a very elegant solution. What we want is to turn our dome, at least the floor of it, into a shadow catcher itself. And here is how you would do that. Well, first thing you might think is let's add in something like a diffuse BSDF or really any kind of BSDF. And while that does give us a shadow, because now there's proper lighting interactions, you're going to see that it makes the whole thing look uh, weird. Um, again, this is because now it's uh, using this as lighting information, and th th there's a whole bunch of weird stuff going on. So somehow uh, we want this diffuse BSDF because it gives us the shadow, but only on the floor, not everywhere else. Okay. Um, in other words, what we want to do is we want to do a mix shader. We are going to mix this BSDF with the version without the BSDF. Okay. Um, so on one hand, we have BSDF, and on the other hand, we don't. So somehow uh, we want both, but just preserving the shadow. Um, a quick way to make a mask between these two that kind of isolates the ground plane is we are going to use texture coordinates. And I realize uh, this part is going to be slightly harder than the rest of the tutorial, but just follow along and just put the nodes where they belong and you will be good to go. Um, texture coordinates, we are going to look at object coordinates, which gives us the coordinates of this dome. One thing we can do with this is use a vector math node to get the length of these vectors again. Uh, don't worry about what these mean. If you're not like a node wizard, you just wanted a ground HDRI. Just follow the steps and it will work. Um, this outputs the length of the object coordinates, um, which kind of already makes a nice radial mask or spherical mask from the center. Uh, just to make this a bit nicer, we are going to use map range so this gradient works for us. First thing we're going to do is we are going to invert the output. So you can see right now, uh, this is sort of going to do what we want when we set this as the factor. If, if I can actually make that connection set that as the factor. You can see it kind of does what we want. And by the way, sometimes you just have to update the shadow. You just like enable, disable, enable, and that will make it uh, look more correct. Um, this kind of gives us what we want. In fact, they might be uh, backwards. Yeah, uh, this kind of gives us what we want to where the floor um, has shadow. In other words, it has the diffuse BSDF and everything else doesn't. But um, because the floor has diffuse BSDF, it's actually going to get brighter because of lighting changes and stuff like that. So uh, we don't want this gradient to be so expansive because anywhere where this is white, we are technically changing what the ground looks like. Uh, so what I recommend is taking the input, just bringing it down just so it's like exactly what you need. You don't want to overdo it or underdo it or whatever. Um, we do that and then we can also soften uh, this gradient by doing that and also uh, switching over to smoother step, uh, which just changes the interpolation type. And this just smooths stuff out uh, quite a bit and we can uh, make that smoothing more or less intense. And you can see that you can kind of see the boundary here. So the softer we make it, the better. Um, so right now we have a setup that's pretty much seamless. You could work on this map range to get slightly better results. But um, the nice thing about this is, again, we're getting the lighting. We are getting the lighting from the HDRI um, because the light is going through the shell. Um, but we're using the shell as not only what we can see, but it's also a shadow catcher. We have the ground projection. We can pick the um, focal length and stuff like that. And one thing that I guess I haven't mentioned that's actually very nice about the setup is because we only disabled shadow and not any of these diffuser glossies. If instead I was to add in a object that's kind of reflective, so I'm going to make a mirror ball sphere, make a material, make it metallic and uh, less rough. Uh, because of the way we've set this up, shade smooth, uh, because of the way we've set this up, it's actually going to reflect, even though the light is coming from the HDRI, it's going to reflect uh, the dome, uh, which is perfect. You can see that the shadow that's being cast on here, it is in the reflection, and that makes everything look uh, super nice. So even if you do not match your HDRI like projected sphere uh, with the environment, um, it's still going to look uh, pretty good. So again, reflections from the dome, and you can disable that by uh, messing with these. Um, but lighting from the original thing. 
And this is just a nice way to visualize your uh, models, if not render them like I showed you how to do. Uh, you could quickly swap out the HDRI by, first of all, swapping out the one that you have here, and second of all, swapping out the one you have in the World tab, and very quickly you could get different results. Let me just show you how you do that. HDRIs, uh, let's do a indoor one. And ideally, so you can see the lighting changed, uh, but the reflection hasn't. Um, ideally, you pick HDRIs with a very far um, away horizon line. Uh, just so that we don't get any stretching on the bottom. Um, but in general, you can see this does exactly what we want it to do. Um, it reacts to lighting situations. Make sure you update your um, shadow thing. Uh, reacts to lighting situations and sh um, reflections and all that. And again, what I was talking about before is this kind of distortion we're getting over here. Uh, that is minimized when the horizon line of the HDRI is far away. Um, but any model you want to put in here, a car or whatever, whatever, it's going to work. It's going to look realistic by virtue of uh, this whole setup. So let's just go into rendered view, go to our camera. Again, um, if you are looking at your camera and you're seeing, wow, everything's starting to look super flat, unlike when we were in the viewport, even when I move around, right, everything's looking super flat, um, go to your camera properties, focal length, bring that down again. So this one's for your camera. And also one thing I should mention, I feel, I feel like I'm just adding more and more on, but this one's uh, pretty cool. Um, by the way, uh, before I do that, uh, use 4K HDRIs. You can see this one's 2K and there's not a lot of resolution on the floor, especially since we projected it. The original one was 4K. Uh, the thing is, if you enable depth of field, and let's say we, you know, depth of field, uh, put our focal plane on the sphere, uh, make it a shallower depth of field, like way shallower. Uh, you can see that depth of field works with this as well because the HDRI, in some sense, the background is actually uh, geometry based, right? Um, so we can actually get a blurry background but have the floor in focus, etc. So anyways, I think that's kind of the essence of what I wanted to talk about with this uh, ground projection. Again, I just want to reiterate there is a way, let's uh, unhide this, uh, there is a way to do everything, this whole kind of setup in the world shader. Um, but it involves a lot of math, and not only do I not understand it, but there's a good chance that you will not understand it um, if you didn't even already know how to do this. No no offense, it's, it's just a thing. Anyways, I hope you learned something in this tutorial. This ground plane projection is great for, you know, any kind of realistic thing you want to do. And uh, yeah, uh, one file for, let's say, this scene is going to be available on Patreon if you just want to play around with this. Um, Patreon is a great way to get blend files for any project that I make. Uh, you can also get exclusive tutorials um, that I do not upload on either YouTube channel, this or CG Matter, uh, Discord access, behind the scenes, stuff like that. But generally, I want to say thank you to all, I think now it's 560, keeps going up. Um, all 560 patrons who thought it was worth it and wanted to support both channels, I highly appreciate it. And to all people listening now uh, who want to do that as well, thank you. Trying to provide um, unique and uh, novel, you know, creative ideas nearly every single day with Blender. Um, but now you now you now blah, blah, blah. what a way to finish. <laughs> now we know how to do the ground plane projection, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and that is the show.